you guys, it's Lexi DIY and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. You may know me from my viral series, Hot Mess House Renovation, here on YouTube Shorts and over on TikTok. If not, if you're just clicking on this video, thank you so much for uh, giving me a shot. I hope that you stick around and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell notification so you never miss when I upload next. Now, today we are doing a very exciting video, the long-awaited master bathroom renovation reveal so make sure to stick around to the end because the transformation is huge now i'm so sorry i missed an upload last week because uh, this bathroom has been kicking my butt but don't worry i'm gonna be back to my normal schedule every sunday also i do have that 100k q a filmed and halfway edited it's so long and i'm actually thinking about maybe doing it live so what would you guys think? Live or just upload the video of the 100K Q&A? Either way, let me know in the comments section below. This is a long video, so I'm just gonna stop talking and hop into the renovation. I started by cleaning out the bathroom floor, just sweeping everything up. It was quite dusty. Honestly, I really didn't anticipate the amount of dust that would be in our house from this renovation. We actually have been sleeping in our guest bedroom because the dust from the bathroom renovation has just like been too much. Uh, but anyway, I measured out to find the center of the room because you are supposed to start tiling from the center. Now, once I had done that and I did previously lay it out, I realized I was gonna get these little tiny cuts on both sides and it was going to look really, really bad. So I kind of played around with it, doing a dry fit of a different pattern that I thought would look better and more modern. I know that you're not supposed to start with whole tiles from you know, one side of the wall or another, but the small cuts would be behind the toilet and the vanity. And so I did end up going with it this way because otherwise I would have had these really tiny, tiny little cuts on both sides and I don't really think that would have looked good. But when I laid it out this way, my edge pieces weren't too bad of cuts and nothing looked really weird. So I went ahead and traced it out and decided this is what I was gonna do even if it wasn't technically how people would normally tile a bathroom. I measured everything out and again, I'm just going around with my pencil. Also probably not the way to do it. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to snap a chalk line, but this is what I found was easiest. And then I took all the spacers and all the tiles out so I could start putting my mortar down. And this process of doing the floor wasn't too bad until I got to one particular cut, which you guys will see here in a minute. Now, I put mortar on the floor and I also put mortar on the back of the tile and I used my little float that had um, some ridges in the edge of it to go ahead and put the ridges in so that the, both of the pieces of mortar, pieces, layers of mortar would kind of congeal together if that makes sense. And then I am using a little mallet to kind of push it down. I'm making sure that everything is level before I move on. Now, um, the first few were kind of the hardest to place and get level just because I didn't want those to be messed up. If those were gonna be messed up, then the entire floor was gonna be messed up. It was a lot easier to use those little suction cups that you guys are seeing us use um, because these tiles were freaking heavy, but also they're just really awkward to get down on the floor in the correct position. So if you're going to be tiling a bathroom, especially with some larger and heavy tiles, definitely get those suction cups. And I would say mostly it's a two person job for sure. Now, I didn't get to film too much of us actually cutting the tiles. Reason being is it was so freaking hot outside, you guys, like literally 100 degrees. But I just marked everything off with some painter's tape and I'm using my Rhinobi tile hand wet saw to cut everything. Um, and it was actually fairly simple. And once I made the cuts, I would go back and just place the mortar down and place the cut pieces in. So pretty simple. I am also making sure that I'm putting those leveling spacers in and that just kind of ensures that the floor is level and that they're all evenly spaced apart. So definitely super important. Again, using that rubber mallet, not like a crazy mallet, a rubber mallet to hit them down and make sure that they are secure in place. You guys can see 
how I tried to cut this to fit around the toilet flange. I honestly thought that I would be able to slide it under. Um, there's no sliding it under, especially once there's mortar under it. If I had gone with like the thin ceramic tiles, I probably would have been able to do that. But these, I definitely can't and I actually broke it. So yeah, the toilet flange really gave me a lot of trouble. I did end up using this little paper as a template and then I had to go around it with an angle grinder with a diamond bit, which was fairly difficult. It was my first time really using it, um, but it just kind of kept sliding everywhere. This was the only way that I could get that circle. I wish I had a smaller one. I also tried to use my little, little rotary tool with a diamond tip. That helped not at all, um, but I was I was finally able to get it around the flange and I was worried that the toilet wouldn't cover it because it still wasn't perfect, but it ended up being okay. Again, I didn't really get to show you guys too much of me cutting those pieces up against the wall, but you'll see that they are fairly significant in size. So it would have been half that size, like I was saying earlier, on both sides of the wall. Um, which I think would have looked really weird if I did it from the center. So just so that you guys can like fully feel where I was coming from with that. Uh, Dustin wasn't home for this part, so it was a little bit more difficult to get these on by myself. because They are just so heavy, but not impossible. So if you're wanting to do it by yourself, you can. This is me struggling to get the new bucket of mortar down the hallway. We did use pre-mixed mortar just because it was easier, but it's definitely more expensive. So if you want to save a little bit of money, definitely go with mixing it yourself. Now, as you can see, I dry fit all of the tiles before I put mortar on. The last thing that you wanna do is cut a tile or put a tile in place and like already have the mortar on it and it not fit, so yeah. Also, my camera ended up dying while I was doing this tile and I cracked it. I freaking cracked it. So I had to take it up and get all of the mortar off the floor and yeah, I definitely cried after this one. So that was probably the most discouraging thing that happened and I was like, all right, let's just move on. I ate a snack, moved on, and I started to finish the rest of the floor. As I mentioned, Dustin wasn't here for this part and it was getting increasingly hard to do it by myself uh, as I was getting into like a smaller space because I'm like kind of tiling myself out of the room. So a tip that I can give is you can see I only have one uh, little suction cup on the tiles right now and I was putting it in the middle and then putting that suction cup like between my legs, holding it with my legs so that the tile would stay firm so that I could put mortar on the back of it and that seemed to work really, really well for me. So if you're wanting to do it by yourself, that is definitely a tip I can give. It was fairly Really simple from this point on and also my tiles aren't directly up against the wall even though it looks like it there is a little space in between I did have to cut the bottom of the door frame to make space for some tile um, here I am outside cutting some tile for the shower niche which I don't know why that footage was randomly there but hey we're gonna go with it and then I started to take the spacers out on this wall because our plumber was coming back to do uh, the shower trim and because they didn't want us to you know like get water everywhere on accident so I just went ahead and grouted this side of the wall. Also, I did film um, Justin, not to be confused with just Dustin, um, coming back and doing the shower trim, but for some reason my camera cut out. So shout out to Justin for doing that. Um, I don't have video of it. So there's randomly gonna be some black shower trim on and uh, that's where it came from. I'm taking out the rest of the spacers now so I continue can continue to grout the shower. Wow, words are hard today, I'm sorry. But um, I did use a pre-mixed grout and I actually found that I was having a lot of trouble with it. I was also having trouble getting these spacers out because the way that you're supposed to is like push the little yellow thing through with this like special tool, but my tool was like trying to scratch up my tiles and I was like, no. So I had to take the little yellow parts out and then I had to just like yank the rest out. It was, it was tragic. Um, definitely shouldn't have gone with these big tiles on our first go, but you live and you learn and they do look great. So still happy we did. Now, like I said, I was having a lot of trouble getting the grout into the corners. Um, and now I know that they have grouted caulk that's like, completely color match so that 
probably would have been a lot easier for the corners, but you know, I didn't know that. And you live and you learn, and yeah. Everything is looking fine. Oh, yeah. It's more than just a feeling. After all that was done, I pulled out the spacers on the floor again. These are the same spacers and I was having the same issue and the marble floors were a lot easier to scratch. Oh, I fell down, oopsie. Um, they were a lot easier to scratch than the ceramic tile. So I was trying to be extra careful, but I did nick the floor in a few different areas. You can't really tell because of the veining, but I know it will bother me, so just a heads up on that. Um, but yeah, I basically just slid around this floor and take, <laughs> took out all of the spacers so that I could prepare it for grout. Now, from this angle, you can see how I had a little bit of space around the, that cut in the tile flange like I was talking about, but our toilet did end up covering it, so thank goodness, because that would have looked a mess. Um, but yeah, now I just gave it a quick clean because there was a lot of like, sandy stuff. I guess that was from the shower grout. I'm not really sure. So I gave that a quick clean. I, um, you know, kind of sponged down any areas that just maybe needed a little bit of extra help because I knew that once the grout went on it, it would just adhere to anything that was still on the floor. So open the premix grout. Now this one was a lot easier to use. It wasn't quite as like thick and sandy so um just a lot easier to use and i'm applying it with my grout float trying to go push it in from like every angle and wiping off the excess at a like 45 degree angle if that makes sense now in hindsight i wish i would have got a little bit darker of a grout but i'll probably go back with one of those grout pens later um and change it out i just want to let you guys know all of the mistakes that i made so you guys can keep these in mind if you're doing a bathroom renovation now we took uh the trim outside and for the baseboards and dustin cut it to size i don't know why we were wearing slides like we weren't working with power tools and then anyway i used my um nailer to just nail the baseboard into the wall and it was super easy i love this cordless nailer it's the best thing ever and it doesn't require a air compressor so highly recommend if you're looking to do diys around your house so here dustin is scrubbing the floor from the grout remains and i am just painting over that baseboard i did fill in the little holes from the nails and I sanded them down, but I just did not end up filming it because this bathroom was a lot, you guys. Um, and then Dustin put in the toilet. I did also caulk around that baseboard, uh, just so that you know. And he said it was actually fairly easy. It was the first toilet that he had ever installed. And it only took him maybe like 15 minutes, if that, I think. Um, so super proud of him on that and it's definitely nice to have two bathrooms back in this house. Now, luckily, um, some of our best friends, Adriana and Bobby, were in town this weekend. So Bobby helped Dustin get the vanity in the bathroom because there was no way I was helping. Like, I could not lift it. I tried and it, it wasn't it. Um, and then, uh, as you can see, we're kind of messing around with the back. I actually had to cut it because the hole wasn't big enough and I wish I would have got a different angle because it actually started smoking as I was cutting it with my multi-tool. So. Yeah, fun fact about that, the back of this vanity almost caught on fire. Um, and then the boys put it into place and we installed the faucet, which wasn't super difficult to do. Um, we did replace some of the plumbing underneath as well. Shout out to Dustin for figuring all of that out because I it couldn't be me. Um, and then there was a lot of measuring that went on um, during this process to figure out where we were gonna put the mirror. Now we had to hang the mirror on a stud and that meant that we had to move over the vanity ever so slightly and it might annoy me for the rest of my life because now it's not perfectly centered but I think it's just something only I would notice because I'm crazy, but I don't know. So we put the screw in and then we hung up the beautiful mirror and uh, so obsessed with it. I was having to make sure everything was level so there was like a lot of little adjustments to be made but overall not too difficult. Now for Dustin because as you guys know I bought two lights. I bought the backup light and then the light that I had initially planned on um, because I didn't know that my 
initial light was gonna be here on time. Little did I know that this bathroom was gonna take me so freaking long. But we put in the backup light first because once we saw it with the mirror, we're like, oh, maybe that will even be better. And then it, it just wasn't it. Like, I think it was just too small, wasn't quite the vibe, and I knew that my initial design was definitely the one that we were going with. So we took out the first light and installed the second light. And I'm so sorry, Dustin, that you had to do that because it did take us a very long time. But we've gotten smart and only turned the power off to like the bedrooms instead of the power off to the entire house. So it didn't get us crazy hot in the house, which that's good. So I was going to use some uh, marble crown molding at the top of the shower, but our ceiling wasn't level. And so it was really difficult. It didn't fit in at one side. And when I tried to cut it, it just looked a freaking hot mess. So I went with these tiles that uh, were just a little bit smaller than uh, in length anyway. They were like the same width, but looks like my original tiles. They're like printed by the same company. They were just a smaller version of this. And I used those since I didn't have any more of these large tiles because floor and decor ran out to just fill in the space at the top. Now, I know that maybe some of you guys can tell, but honestly, in person, I'm telling you, they look exactly the same. So I'm really happy that I went with that option because I actually think that the marble crown molding probably wouldn't have looked quite as nice. Oh, almost fell. Okay, so I didn't get to film it because I was literally racing against a tropical storm today because um, I had to cut the tile outside and I literally finished cutting these tiles right in time. So I didn't film any of it because I knew that that would like slow me way down. So these, the shower pan is not actually in, they're just cut and I did a dry fit. So I wanted to show you guys that because I was dry fitting them like as I was cutting them and so I didn't get to film it. Um, but that's probably for the better because I know that this video is going to be so long. Anyway, um... Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and pick them up. I did label the ones around the drain because they're very specific cuts. I'm going to take a picture so I don't forget. Um, and then we are finally going to tile this shower pan. So here's what it looks like dry fit. Um, it's already looking so much better and I only had my handheld wet saw. So some of the cuts were a little bit crazier, um, but once everything was grouted and caulked, you really couldn't tell. So I just picked up all of the tiles and started to apply my mortar to the ground. Now, um, I like this mortar a lot better. I did use premix for literally everything just to save time because you guys, doing a renovation is really time consuming, but when you add filming and editing to that, that process, it really takes a long time. Um, and I got this one from Home Depot, if I can remember. I'll try to link this one. Um, and I think I got the other big buckets that I didn't like quite as much from Lowe's, um, which is normally the opposite, because I normally like Lowe's a lot better. Anyway, I was applying all of these on the back wall, and there's like a special kind of like technique that you can use to um, apply the tiles in a straight line and make sure that everything is level. And I'll kind of show you that in a minute here so that you can see it up close but I did the back of the shower pan first. And then I, um, I'm i showing you also, like in a second here, up close of how I'm applying the mortar because you don't wanna apply like that much, honestly. So I'm applying a thin layer. You don't want it to come through all of those little cracks and crevices because it's really hard to clean up. So I'm giving it that score pattern. I'm using a little handheld trowel because I found that to be a lot easier. And then this is what I was talking about. I'm putting the tile sheet on top of the other one that's already down and I'm sliding it in so that it just kind of fits together like a puzzle piece. And then I just press it down to make sure that everything is adhered. Now, it was time to do some touch up paint around this light and I needed to um, tape off the shower, or not the shower, the mirror and the vanity so I wouldn't get anything on it. And then it was time to do this uh, shower niche. Now I have been holding this off and actually my camera died in the middle of it. But what you didn't see because this video was so long and I had to edit it out was I messed up on this and it looked so bad. So I literally ripped it off while it was still wet. 
um, and was like, I will try again another day. So I was avoiding it like the plague. And then I was having a real tough time with this Teflon tape. Um, applying the um, Teflon tape and not being able to see it was like almost impossible, which was driving me nuts from a design perspective. And then I dropped it and I had to like re-roll it all up. So I stopped filming putting it on the shower head, but that's fine. Um, you guys will see that big transformation at the end and it's coming up shortly. So trust me, it's totally worth the wait. Then it was time to uh, just screw in my little toilet paper holder and uh, my towel rack. I got both of those from Ikea, super inexpensive. I kind of had a little bit of trouble, as you can see, making sure that the towel rack was level. Um, but once I got it on, it was fairly simple. And now I am just styling, putting everything down. Um, I got this cute little fluffy rug, a new towel. I really wanted some burnt orange towels, but I couldn't find any. So that's kind of upsetting, but that's okay put my soap dispenser and a cute little plant. I did also add some little plants to the back of the toilet. I'm so excited because you guys are about to see the before and afters. video you guys I was tearing up editing this because the bathroom has come so so far make sure that you follow me on all my other socials if you happen to have them they'll be linked here on the screen and in the description box below if you're wondering uh, what I used for any part of this renovation there is um, some Amazon links they are affiliate links I make a small commission if you do choose to purchase from them but they have most of the exact things that I used for the bathroom so that is there and um, make sure that you guys stay tuned because next week we are doing some really exciting videos not quite as intense as the bathroom but a huge transformation nonetheless so I will see you guys next time bye